All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Thank you for those of you who are joining me tonight. And also, I know, as I mentioned to some of the people earlier, that we have a lot of people that are going to be joining us later. I will be recording this session so you can watch as a team if that's something you're interested in. Um, I'm really excited to talk with you tonight about performance plates. Um, just a couple housekeeping things. I did drop um, some information in the chat. I will be sure to share that again at the end in case people come in late. Um, but one thing Thing is I'm not able to see the chat as we go along. So if you don't mind, kind of save your questions towards the end and we will utilize that chat function. Um, if you do have any questions, I'll be sure to leave time at the end so that we can get those answered. Just type them in the chat. And as soon as I'm done with the presentation, I'll stop my screen share so I can hop over and see those questions. So um, for those of you who are here tonight, welcome. For those of you who are watching later, welcome as well. Tonight we're going to talk about performance plates. So I am Cara Miller, your campus dietitian. We've got multiple schools on the call tonight. Um, for those of you I haven't met, I just wanted to introduce myself. Thank you for joining. Um, my email address is there as well as my Instagram account. So hopefully that is helpful to you. Um, I'll have that information at the end as well. So tonight with performance plates, I always just like to start us off a little factoid or a little fun fact. So nearly one in three athletes are under fueling. This can decrease our performance and increase our risk for injury. So just a couple of things. It definitely can decrease our speed. It can decrease our agility. It can decrease our concentration and our focus ability. It can also decrease our recovery. So what I mean by that is that our recovery takes longer or it isn't done correctly because if you don't have enough fuel, we'll talk about kind of building blocks. You can't recover as well, which puts you at a higher risk for injury. Um, some people have chronic muscle soreness if there really are under fueling. But the other thing I just want you all to think about is if you're coming into a performance or a competition and you are not fueled correctly, your competition is, is fueled correctly. We know we might all start at the same caliber or you might be even at the start of the game, but towards the end of the game is when maybe can make the big difference. So if you're under fueling, especially with a pregame meal, um, your competition might be outplaying you at the end of the game. So just a few things to think about as we kind of move into this topic. I wanted to show you this kind of pyramid idea. If we have a really solid base, we can build on it, right? I'm sure even your coaches talk about different things like that with fundamentals and things like that. If you've got a really strong base, you can build on it. Um, and we're in that season right now when we talk about our fueling. So I'm starting right at the very bottom. If you didn't join me for hydration last month, I did link that in the notes in the chat. I will put it in the recording as well, but you can watch the recording on YouTube. So this is being recorded right now. Um, if you have to leave early or whatever, you'll be able to catch up. If you have a teammate you want to watch it, they'll be able to watch the recording as well. But also, if you missed hydration, go back and watch it. I think it was really helpful and informative. I got some good feedback on it. But tonight we are talking about the food. So we wanna make sure that you're eating enough that means three meals plus one or two snacks, right? It depends on the person. Maybe you need three snacks. Um, whole foods, big food groups, lots of color. Again, trying to reduce the inflammation, speed up our recovery, and decrease our injury um, with that color. So we really are still on that very bottom tier, food first fueling. Um, obviously making sure we're getting tons of rest. I'm not going to touch on that one tonight, but I did want to mention that we are going to cover meal timing next month. So if you're like, oh gosh, what should I eat and when? We're going to talk about the what to eat tonight, but we are going to tie it all together next month with more on the timing. I'll talk about it a little bit, but we're not going to get in detail about exact minutes and how often and how far apart and things like that. Um, so we are just going to focus primarily on the meals tonight. So again, food first and hydration. For those of you who missed the hydration talk, one of the kind of key takeaways is to take your weight in pounds and divide that number by two. That's roughly the number of ounces of water you should be consuming each day. So, um, you know, you can do that yourself, but that's roughly the amount of water you should be consuming. And that doesn't include sweat losses. So if you have long practices, hour and a half, two hours, you're probably losing quite a good amount of sweat. So making sure that you're accounting for that in your hydration as well. So we're going to talk about the performance plates tonight. Um, 
everyone's in a different point. Some people are in season. Some people just, I know a lot of basketball teams now have just kicked up their training into full training. Um, they went from like light practices. Now they're full on. We have some people that are already injured or have some other reasons for a lighter training schedule. Um, most people are going to hang out right around in the moderate to hard plate range here when we're looking at these kind of diagrams and we'll go through them in a little bit more detail we're gonna try to again hang out kind of in the hard training plate mindset um, when we're looking at the different how to divvy up your plate but you can kind of see here that i've got these sort of buckets so we've got protein bucket a carbohydrate bucket a color bucket a fat bucket and those i'm always just going to kind of say like hey are you filling your buckets do you have protein do you have a carb do you have color and just reminding athletes you all that like a salad of a chicken on it is not enough. You're not getting in those carbohydrates um, or a granola bar with an apple is not enough. It's not going to properly fuel you. So it is better than eating nothing, um, but it may not be enough. The other side of that is I get a lot of questions, Cara, like how many macros should I be consuming or how many calories should I be looking at? Um, and I'm not a fan of that. And so you might be disappointed to hear that. But what I've found just over the years of counseling is that people can get nitpicky about it. They get a good bed mentality like, oh, I'm being good today. Oh, I'm not doing good today because you want a couple over, you want a couple under. Um, it can really create an obsession with food. And so I really like the idea of using these buckets and also pictures of your plate. So I'll even have that instead of people taking these detailed logs, I'll just say like, hey, take a picture of each of your meals, take a picture of each of your snacks, and we can look through it together because what I'm even looking for on your plate, do you have a good portion of protein, a good portion of carbohydrates, and for sure some different colors included on that plate? They all have um, reasons why they are included in those plates. So again, looking at the different buckets, and that will really help to make sure that you're not under fueling. Um, and I would just want to note, I guess, that this can change throughout the season. So maybe you're a player that plays a ton and you might be in this hard training plate for each of your meals, but you get injured. So you're going to cut back. You're probably going to be in a light to moderate training plate for a little while, maybe even moderate, because even though you've been injured, your body is still trying to recover and rebuild um, and repair what's gone on. Um, but maybe when you get into summer training, you kind of really ease up a lot. So you're going to go into the light training. Training. So these are all adaptable and just kind of realizing that the more exercise you're doing, the more carbohydrates you need. Carbohydrates are not bad. Carbs are an athlete's best friend. So we're going to start right there. Um, if you've heard me do any of these talks before, you realize that I talk a lot about carbohydrates. They really are this awesome choo-choo train. So I always talk about it. You've got these glycogen stores in your muscles. They really are glucose molecules linked together, just like a choo-choo train here. And in order to burst up and down the court, to run the bases, to throw a ball, to do all the things, you have to break off a choo-choo train to use it for energy. It throws it into the cycle so that you get energy out. Um, we want what the food you're taking in to be immediate energy into your muscles so that you are fueled for your performance. So it does help you fuel. It does help with that endurance. It helps you compete and refuel, which we're not going to touch on a ton tonight, but just so that you're aware you want to refuel with some carbohydrates as well. So looking at that again, when I'm talking about, you know, maybe your competition is out fueling you, they may come into a competition with full choo-choo drains. So you can see where halfway through the game, you know, and then maybe they're refueling at halftime, they're full again and you're half empty. So now you're competing at, you know, 50 to 75% and they're still at hundred because they refueled. So now you're all full again. Um, and you can see how that could create a competitive advantage if your competition is, is fueling properly. Same being said, if you are fueling properly, you can have that competitive advantage as well. Um, so talking about carbohydrates, this is that half a plate for a hard training plate. Um, at minimum, right now, most of you are in season or getting in season should be a third of a plate, not a quarter of a plate. You're not going to get enough energy or enough carbohydrates to fuel yourself properly there. We really view carbohydrates as energy. So we've got fast energy and we've got sustained energy. The easier it is to chew, the simpler it is to digest. So you're going to try to use these simple carbohydrates or the fast energy the closer you are to your competition time. If you've got less than two hours, you're going to look for things like the pretzels, the crackers, the animal crackers, dry cereal, dried fruits, maybe applesauce. You can even use a little bit of Gatorade or juice here. Again, we're not getting into timing a ton, but a lot of my early morning practice athletes, you will definitely benefit from a Gatorade or juice and an applesauce squeeze 30 minutes before you're 
6 a.m. as opposed to getting up three hours before and having a full meal, right? That's just not practical. Um, if you do have at least three to four hours, we are looking at more of these complex carbohydrates. So our pregame meal falls right in there. It's usually three to four hours before your competition. You should be having your pregame meal. You do want this plate just like we have here. Um, but looking at carbohydrates as like, okay, kind of pay attention to how you're feeling. Um, sweet potatoes, brown rice, all our whole grains are excellent here. Um, as long as you got four hours, the closer you are to that three hours, you might want to go more towards a white rice or white bread. And I know that seems crazy because I'm a dietitian. I'm telling you to eat white bread, but it is because we want it to digest well so that it goes into your muscle. We've all had that where you go into a competition. You're like, Oh, I just feel so heavy. There can be a lot of reasons for that. Um, but one of them can be having stuff that's too hard to digest. Um, so making sure that you do have time to digest that. And the benefit of having your pregame meal four hours before is you can have these complex carbohydrates and it's sustained energy. It takes a little longer for it to absorb. So it'll take a little longer for it to go into your system and burn off. So you can have a little pregame snack and then your pregame meal will sustain you through the game. So huge benefits there to having both if you're ever able to incorporate that. And then realizing that after a practice, after a competition, you really are focused on the sustained energy. We want to make sure we have all that color, all that fiber. It helps with gut health. It helps us feel satisfied. Um, and it definitely decreases some inflammation too when we have those extra colors and fibers in there. Here's just a quick timing. I know I get a lot of these questions, so I'm not gonna focus on it tonight, but just to give you an idea, three to four hours before is your complex carbohydrates. And the closer you get to that training, we want it to be easier to chew so it's easier to digest, go straight to the muscle so you can use it for energy. So if you've got like 30 to 60 minutes before your, um, competition, you may want to have a Gatorade or some goldfish crackers or something that's a really quick carb just to top off your source. You're totally full when that game starts. Next, we have protein. Protein is a building block. Some of you have heard that before. The building block of life. So protein is our build um, if we're looking at building and recovering. So um, our meats have it, all of our beans and legumes, of course, are plant-based sources. And one thing that I heard once, I can't remember I heard it was, was eat less legs. And you're like, oh, Carla, that's such a gross thing. But you know how like um, pork pigs have four legs, cows, beef have four legs. So those are four. Chicken, turkey have two legs, fish have no legs. So the less legs you eat, um, it can be a leaner source, but it can also be um, less of those high saturated fats, which can kind of bog you down just a little bit. So also looking at the plant-based options. So again, beans and legumes are a great option. Nuts and seeds are also a great option. Um, and I mentioned the whole grains on the last slide with carbohydrates. So those add just a teensy bit of protein too. Milk is on this slide. Milks and yogurts are excellent. Yogurt, um, especially like a good Greek yogurt as a bedtime snack is a great option because it has the slow acting protein and the fast protein weight and casein. So you've got a quick, nice refuel rebuild and then you've got the one overnight to sustain you, which I, I really love. Um, and just keeping in mind that our milks are not all created equal. So cow's milk and soy milk have a good bit of protein, but our almond milk, cashew milk, coconut milk, all the other milks, oat milk, they don't have any protein. So if you're drinking them because of the flavor, that's totally fine. If you're drinking them because you think you're adding protein to your diet, you're not. So I do recommend for our athletes to get in the soy or the cow's milk just so that you're getting in that added protein. Um, eggs are listed here as well. I didn't put supplements on here. I probably knew I would get a question about supplements. We're going to cover supplements in the December talk. But my talk thing here is, again, start with the basics. If you got your three meals and two snacks, you're getting good sleep, you're getting your hydration. We're going to look at our meal timing. You could add in a supplement, but we want to make sure that it's third party tested. So I always recommend NSF. Um, the other thing is that we don't want to use it in place of food. If you've got a gushing wound and you put a band aid on it, it is not not going to help you recover. It's not going to go to the root of the problem, right? So we want to make sure that you're getting it food first as much as possible.
Color is the next one. Colors are protection. It's like our big shields of protection. So eat a rainbow. It'll help protect you, help protect you from injury. Um, fruits and vegetables are full of water, which we've talked about hydration. They also have lots of fiber, which definitely promotes our gut health, um, helps feed our bacteria. I know that seems weird, but um, fiber is a good prebiotic. So the word prebiotic means that we're actually feeding the good bacteria. So we're kind of helping it grow and replicate, which is wonderful. Each color has a different key nutrient. Um, so again, trying to make sure that you're eating lots of different colors. And no, I don't mean Skittles. Don't eat a rainbow that way. Yes, you can have Skittles, but have a few your fruits and vegetables too. Um, if you don't like something, maybe you say, Cara, I hate leafy greens. There may be other ways to get in greens, like green apples. But also consider that different greens taste different. If you like really spicy foods, you might like arugula. If you like sweeter things, you might like a butter leaf um, or even a spinach. If you like carrots, you probably also like orange bell peppers or yellow bell peppers. Or if you like more spicy things, you might go towards the green or red bell peppers. So just realizing that try to get in lots of different colors as best you can and realizing that even among things like grapes, green grapes taste totally different than purple grapes. So try to get in different things um, as much as you can there. And I think that will be really helpful. The other thing is I told you you could look at a picture of your plate. Trying to get in at least three colors on your plate is really helpful. So if you look at your plate and you're like, oh, geez, it's kind of tan, brown, orange, you're probably missing the color, the fiber, um, all the things. Those antioxidants help to reduce our inflammation, which is really helpful in muscle recovery and recovering from a lot of your training sessions. So again, looking at your plate, try to get in at least three colors. Um, if you're going to Chick-fil-A, you've got a fried chicken sandwich with French fries and a milkshake. It's all kind of tan brown orange, right? So could you add some lettuce and tomato on your fried sandwich? Or could you try the grilled sandwich and still get the French fries? Um, could you try getting a grilled chicken sandwich or a fried chicken sandwich and instead of French fries on the side, try a fruit cup or a salad cup? Like there's ways to get in that color without kind of doing this all or nothing mentality. Um, the other thing we want to touch on is fat. So um, a lot of our healthy fats are wonderful. They help create satiety. Um, and so this is a really good option um, to try to get in like your omega-3s, your fatty fish if you like them. Avocado is a great option. Again, our nuts and seeds come back in this category as well. Uh, and, and all of this, again, like I said, can help with satiety. We've all had that meal where you're like, oh, eating something and you're just like, oh my gosh, like I'm full, but I'm not very satisfied. So trying to make sure that you're getting in those fats can be a good option there. Before we move on, I did just want to say that, again, the closer we get to the competition, the less fiber, the less protein, and the less fat we want because fat, fiber, protein sit in our stomach and coat our stomach. That's what helps with that satiety with all of those. So that is not what you want when you're about to run up and down a basketball court, right, or up and down a soccer field. So making sure that you get the stuff that's quickly absorbed so it's not sitting in your stomach, which could make you sick. You could get muscle cramps or stomach cramping, um, and you might just feel really heavy, kind of like what we talked about. So um, leading right up to the competition is more carbohydrates, but pregame meal, all the foods. After your competition, all the foods. The more color, the more fiber, the more protein and healthy carbs, the better. So I'm just saying right around that competition time, about 30 minutes before up to 30 minutes after, you are going to have to use those like really simple carbohydrates. Otherwise, you really won't feel well. One resource you have available to you at all the universities that I cover is the Bite app. So this is Bite U by Sodexo. It's that little B with the U at the top. Um, and it has the menu on it. So this can be really helpful in seeing the menu before you go and kind of knowing what options you have. If you're not familiar with it, I highly recommend downloading that app. Um, I did want to go over a couple of the logos. The heart is mindful, so that indicates a healthy choice based on calories, lower saturated fat. Um, and then we have the vegetarian which is the V, orange V, and vegan, which is VG, and it's green. I remember it because like vegans go a little extra, so they're extra green. I don't know if that helps you, but that helped me remember which is V and which is VG. So we're just going to take a little practice. So say you've got your pregame meal coming up and you're going into the dining hall and you're going to look at the menu and you see that simple servings, which is our allergen friendly station. Not all schools have it, but there's a lot of stations that would serve like an entree similar menu. So we've got a pork loin. Loin means lean. So that's a good option because we know that it's not super high in fat um, and that means it won't sit super heavy with you. 
Um, we've got steamed brown rice, which is great, and some roasted vegetables. So you can kind of see here that you'd want to put your pork tenderloin in the protein category, right? A quarter of your plate, so probably a good three, four slices, right? Color, you can put those roasted vegetables there. And then carbs. You say, carb, I really don't want to eat like a whole half plate of rice, right? You don't have to. Maybe you want to do a quarter of your plate rice and you want to grab a roll with it or um, a half of a bagel from the bagel station. Or maybe you want to add in some extra yogurt or maybe a cup of fruit. And I know that's colorful, but it is also carbohydrates. So you can meet that carbohydrate category in more than one way. Or maybe say, Car, I don't really like roasted vegetables. Like zucchini is not really my thing. Okay, fine. Could you have a half plate of carbs, quarter plate of protein? And then for your color, add in a side salad, or maybe you are going to put in um, some fresh fruit there. And so I do note here that if you're going to add in vegetables for your pregame meal, certain things like broccoli, cauliflower, lots of onion or garlic, those are called cruciferous vegetables. They just feel really bloaty. <laughs> um, you get really gassy from them. They're not going to make you feel good. So if you can choose things more like roasted carrots or steamed carrots. Green beans is a good one. Zucchini is actually a great option. Um, bell peppers will go fine. Any of your lettuce greens with like shaved carrots on it, those will go fine too. So just trying to say, again, the more you have to chew it, the longer it takes to digest. And some of those things like broccoli and cauliflower can make you feel really gassy. So again, recommending don't try any new foods as a pregame meal. It may make you really upset. So trying to stick with some things that you are familiar with, because if you don't like it, you might underfuel, right? Unintentionally. Or if you feel really bloated and gassy, and it's not something that sits well, again, you're going to underfuel or you're just not going to feel well for the game. So kind of trying to stick with things that you're familiar with. So if it's not in season for you right now, now is a great time to try some new foods. See how you feel. See how it affects your play, because you're not in the middle of season where you know it's going to have a big impact. Don't forget about the grab and go options. We do have simply to go at the campuses. They always have things like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and fruit cups. Um, you can always get something like a yogurt or you could get a little applesauce squeeze or something like that. So say you've got um, a two o'clock practice in the afternoon, maybe even three o'clock and you've got time for lunch sometime between noon and one. Well, it's not quite four hours, right? So you kind of want to go with something that's a little easier to chew, a little easier to digest. Maybe you want to go with a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and an applesauce sauce squeeze. That would be a great option to try to get something in you before your practice that you know you're going to tolerate well. If you get a big salad with chicken on it and a Gatorade, it's just not enough carbohydrates to fuel you through that practice. And you might feel pretty full pretty quickly because it does have so much fiber. So depending on, again, how much time you've got, which we'll talk about more at the next talk, um, just kind of being mindful and paying attention to that. I did mention Gatorade. If you want to do a lemonade or water, that's fine. I usually recommend water with everything unless it's kind of around your competition or a pregame meal. Um, usually water is enough, especially if you're choosing foods wisely. Um, but don't forget your hydration. Really, really important to remember when you're having your meals and between your meals to be drinking lots of water. Shouldn't skip anything. Okay, we'll go over examples. I just want to give an example of a sandwich shop. I find that a lot of places, um, a lot of teams go to like a Subway, a Jersey Mike, some kind of place where you can make a sandwich. So I thought this would be a good one, again, to kind of go over what does a pregame meal look like if I had to go to a sandwich shop. Um, aiming for lean proteins, again, turkey shaped chicken, something like that would be a good option because it's going to be easy to chew, easy to digest. It's not going to sit super heavy in your stomach like a pulled pork or a beef brisket. Like those are high fat and kind of grisly or piece of meat. So they're going to take longer to choose. They might not sit so well with you. Um, choosing something that is whole grain, if you have that three to four hours, is a good option. Add a healthy oil, add lots of color. So again, half our plate of carbohydrates, you've got the bread, you've got some pretzels. What's your color? You could do a side salad or a fruit cup. Your protein is already on the sandwich. So you can kind of mix and match however you want, right? Like even if you had to go to Chick-fil-A, <laughs> there's grilled chicken sandwich, which you could put veggies on and it's on a whole grain bun. You could get a fruit cup or a yogurt parfait with that and have a water or a lemonade. And that could make just fine of a pregame meal. And you're like, Car, you just told me. Yes, I know. There's lots of ways that you can make this work. Maybe you're going out to for pasta. You could do half your plate of pasta or a quarter plate of pasta with a roll or two with it. Usually I get the bread at the 
basket, right? Bread basket. And then you've had your, um, like maybe it's a grilled chicken breast with like a marinara sauce on it. And then for your color, you can add in some side salad, a fruit cup for dessert. Um, maybe they do have an option like green beans or something that you could have in there. Um, if you're going to like a roadhouse kind of style, maybe you're going to do um, a good size baked potato again with a roll or a piece of fruit, or maybe it's just a giant big potato. Some of these potatoes now are so big. Um, and then for your protein, maybe you're going to choose something like a pork tenderloin. Maybe you have a fish option that you can put there. And then for your color, again, you've got the different salads, maybe some steamed carrots or zucchini or something like that. So there's lots of different ways that you can kind of mix and match and make it that way. Maybe one more I'll go over would be like a burrito bowl. If you're going to like a Chipotle or something like that, um, depending on the spice level, that can sit differently with people too for pregame meals. But you've got, you know, a big bowl of rice. You've got some beans in there, which is excellent. You can always add in an extra protein from a meat source as well. And then adding tons of color. So you can add in like your pico and you've got some guac, which adds in a healthy fat. Um, so there's different things that you can add in there to get in lots of color, um, not too much fiber, but a good amount of carbohydrates and protein, again, just to fuel you really well throughout that game. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. The next talk is going to be the first Tuesday of each month. So that's actually November 2nd for the next one. So Tuesday, November 2nd, same time, 7 p.m., 8 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and you can get to it through the same link that you went to today. It's a recurring appointment. So if the link worked for you today, it'll work for you again. Um, or I will link my, uh, the, um, so sorry, in my Instagram, I did change my link in there. So you can click that um, or you can use this QR code. If you want, more of these. I do have more presentation style and I have an eight and a half by 11 that has the QR code on it if you want to post it in your locker room or something like that so that other athletes can join in as well. So again, my information is there at the bottom. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can see if we have any questions. All right, let's see. I'm going to highlight this again and see if I can put this want to make sure that you've got um, the links and everything. Okay, let me pop this in the chat. I'm going to type it in one more time. So you've got um, in the chat, I did put a few things. My email address is there. Um, the PowerPoint slides are there. So if you want them as a reference, you're welcome to use them. They're just like a PDF. You can print them, use them however you'd like. Um, I also put some downloadable resources. So there is a performance plate, which is through the CPSCA, which is the Collegiate Sports Dietitian Group, which is awesome. Um, they also have one on building a performance plate, kind of like what we talked about tonight, but it's just like a two page front and back handout. Um, and then we've got healthy grocery shopping, which I thought if we're talking about meals, we might want to add in a little thing on grocery shopping. Um, and then if you did miss the talk from last month on hydration, um, you can go ahead and look at the YouTube channel and that has that link on there as well. So um, without further ado, I'm happy to answer any questions. Otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful evening. And for those of you joining us later, um, I hope you enjoyed the talk. Please reach out if you have any questions.